Hi, I'm Deb G uh, Gates Kale, and uh, Pastor Bakery came to Mount Carroll before I was born. And I just want to encourage those who are in the ministry of how, uh, when you commit to a ministry, how uh, uh, that commitment uh, can uh, go on for years and years because of uh, Carl and Catherine's, Catherine's commitment to that. My mom and dad made a commitment to Christ. Um, in fact, uh, I still, every time I probably had seen Carl as I was an adult, we got into a conversation about when he went to Mount Carroll and there was like five families, about six people maybe, and uh, there was five families and one grudge at the church. <laughs> That's Carl. <laughs> you probably truly believe there was, but anyway. Uh, then he, he performed my mom and dad's wedding, and, um, and so they have been great friends even uh, from now, uh, then until now for me, uh, born the same year as Tim. <laughs> and uh, we have continued to keep in contact with them and just appreciate uh, uh, their spirit and their ministry. Uh, my mom and dad heard from Carl, and he usually it was Carl who wrote the letters as they uh, were retired and older. And so I always knew when Carl had written because my mom and dad would say, Carl wrote us. And so one of the letters that Carl had written was... Uh, he was having a really good day. He was sitting in his recliner. His arms were hanging limply, limply along his side. And he, he had his head back, a drool running from his mouth. And uh, he was having a good day. And uh, I remember one time visiting a Freeport, and he, uh, as an adult, he asked me, uh, what do you like on your strawberries? And I said, oh, probably ice cream. He says, well, I like manure. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Uh uh, I'm glad you're here because you may not know, I'm sure you don't know this, but your dad has always been one of my heroes. Uh, he had a humbleness and a gentleness and a love for people that I can only aspire to. Thank you. Um, I don't have like a story, but I have some snippets that maybe some of the other, I'm sure some of the other grandchildren and maybe grand, great grandchildren can. I just started writing them down as I was sitting here in just a few minutes. I could probably list tons more, but just little things like coffee candy, lemon or orange peel flavoring, grandpa cups, grandpa cookies, bacon, <laughs> whisker rubs, taking his teeth out and wanting to give a kiss. <laughs> Letters, um, when I went through a phase where I wanted to um, draw bunnies all the time. And he would send me letters with um, bunnies with one of them being a wheel for some reason, just no particular reason, just thinking that that bunny looked better with a wheel for an ear. Um, <laughs> having my tonsils out and him sending me a bunny with a sore eye to keep me company. Um, just, I could list many more, but snippets of things like that were very special to me. Thank you, Christine. Paul? I don't think my cord's that long, well, so if you'll come over here. This is uh, one of my sons here. He, uh, on weekends, he works with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> He's just very busy, he seems <laughs> Okay, uh, this, this is more serious. Uh, my brother Mark uh, wanted me to express his regret for not being able to be here. Uh, he's in Switzerland at the moment. But uh, he did pen this and ask me to read it. He does a little bit of writing. Uh, it's called, It is his first day of school. After a night's rest, he gets up early, new clothes, meets the rest at the bus stop. Driver smiles, get on board. There in a flash light and speed into the room welcome there in the glow warm soft no shadow no fear his heart leaps it's the one he wanted the only teacher that could do yes come sit here at my feet enveloped in the perfect the one nothing could move his eyes from them there is nothing else to see this will be his classroom now without end no spring break, no summer vacation, snow days, an endless thrall. Learning, 
What could come after? Just more and more. Today is his first day of school. Thank you, Paul and Mark. Anyone else have uh, anything you'd like to say? Okay. Um, I do. I tell one dadism since I have this microphone and I can do it. Uh, and maybe you all appreciate this because uh, we've had some rather crazy things going on in government and business and uh, just about every area of life. And uh, Dad would be working on a sermon or something. You see, he was really deep in thought. And pretty soon you'd hear him mumble, oh, the whole world's nuts. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as far as memories, uh, Grandpa had an incredible memory. I was just amazed at his, the, the recall. You know, even you shared some examples, one of the, one of the siblings shared an example of uh, or 1935, he remembered that snowstorm, you know? That's something I did not inherit was, was the memory. But I remember just a few years ago talking to Grandpa, and he remembered when he, asked, he used to have to wear a dress when he was just a toddler. And he remembered the itchy stockings that his mom used to put on him and just the misery. So I'm thinking, you know, that, my gosh, that was, you know, 90 years ago when that, when that occurred. And he can remember that. And uh, I'm glad they, they're not doing that anymore. But uh, there's, a picture, <laughs> there's a picture of that up here. But um, on a more serious note, um, we work uh, pretty close with, uh, with high school students. And so we see a, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, of how sins of the father carry down to their sons and daughters and to the grandkids. And here's a situation where we see the blessings and the obedience of the father trickle down to his kids, trickle down to grandkids. And so Amy and I, we, we talk about this a lot, on just how we couldn't be doing what we're doing, um, just the passion that we have for lost people, and a lot of you guys in here are in the same boat, plugged into ministries, and we wouldn't be doing what we what we do if it wasn't for grandma and grandpa and just the passion and the obedience to, to Christ that they have. So thanks, Grandma. Thanks, Grandpa. That's Andy, that's Steve's son. Hello, I'm Sherry, Dave's wife, and one of my really neat memories of dad was um, I just went up I think to visit for a weekend four day weekend or something like that and I got up early to the smell of mom making pancakes and there was the pastor of this church at the time over visiting and I thought he was just coming to visit dad and then dad got up and he was straightening his clothing and I said where are you going dad and he says I'm going with the pastor here to visit the old people, and that was about nine years ago when he was nine. <laughs> That's great. In case you couldn't tell, um, my grandfather was a very great man. Um, I'm Jeff Binkley. I'm, I'm Big Son. My name is Jeffrey Carl Binkley, and this is my son, Jonathan Carl Binkley. But um, my grandfather was, was a very great man, and I think all of you know that. But one thing that has struck me for years and years and years is the man's humility and humbleness. And I brought full circle as we share today in this sanctuary, because in the basement of this building, I was taught a lesson in humility by this man. Um, Church of Goddard, we have some different things that we do. One of the things we do is we wash each other's feet. And um, it was something that I looked forward to. I grew up in this church. It was something that I looked forward to because I'd always position myself to sit beside my grandpa so I could wash his feet because that was a way of, of showing my, my, my love and my admiration and my, and my pride in having this great man as my grandfather. Well, we'd gather in a circle, the women would be in one room, the men in another, and um, one year I goofed. Sure enough, I got to sit by my grandpa, but I was on the wrong side. And instead of me washing this great man's feet, he washed mine. And 
you want to talk about humility, <laughs> you want I am the least of these, my brother. And here's this great man watching. Thank you all for being here and sharing in this moment with us.